These days, putting unframed canvas artwork on the walls is completely acceptable. Just as common, though, is to float the canvas in a frame like these from Utah artists we love and know. We like the finishing look this outline gives, and while you can pay a framer to do custom work for you, my guest Jamie Ray has a way to make a floating canvas frame yourself for a few dollars and a trip to the home center. We can handle that. Great to see you. So set us up here. What's a floating frame? So a floating frame is made for canvas artwork or signs, and it's made so that way the canvas floats inside the frame. It's not actually touching it, and it gives you some great three-dimensional design to your display. It's that depth we want for our walls and in our home design. Tell me about your design. So my design is made for your average DIYer, and it just requires a few simple things, a handsaw, a screwdriver, some wood, and then you can finish it how you want. So it doesn't require anything, no power tools. At all. I was going to say though, you threw out handsaw and there's an intimidation factor even there. If you're not a woodcutter or you're not a furniture refinisher like yourself, but easy enough? It's definitely easy enough. And if you know the dimensions that you need, you can also have the hardware store cut it for you. That's what I'll be doing. That yeah. is what I'll be doing. All right, take us through this, it. Jamie. Okay, so when you get started, you're going to need just a few basic things. Mm -hmm. We've got our canvas here. You can do any size. Okay. Or if you've already got artwork that you've purchased and you need to frame, you can use that as well. Check. And then you're going to need four strips of wood mm -hmm. cut to the right dimension here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can use wood that's thick or skinny depending on how you want it. And I like mine up on the side. And then these brackets go in here. I'm going to show you in a little bit about so how we assemble it the all. The thicker the wood, the more dramatic the depth we are talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what's really popular right now is just the thin frames. It really lets the artwork shine. Nice, nice. What's, what stain did you use? Because that is a perfect brown. It's Jacobian. It's one of my favorites. Okay. It's just darker than dark walnut. It lets the grain show through, but it's just nice and dramatic and gives it some I texture. like it because it could go if you're, if you're sticking with the traditional color palettes of the taupes and the creams, it mm -hmm. could go with that, but it could also lend itself to grays, which are so mm -hmm. popular right now too. So do you sand these guys down? Yeah, you can sand them or a lot of times when I buy the wood, it's sanded down enough that I'm good to go. I mean, it's not like you're going to be putting your hand on it a lot. Okay. But if you've got a rotary sander, you can use that. Oh, you, here I am staining it. If, you, want, you, if you don't want to stain it, you could absolutely leave it natural. Uh -huh. Light wood is coming back in design. So you could absolutely leave it natural or you could paint it with any kind of acrylic or chalk paint. I was going to say, works. chalk paint would look mm -hmm. cool with that palette color against the white canvas. Exactly. Well, and you can see right here, my husband's just using a Sharpie. So if you see a design that you want, you just pencil it out and use a Sharpie. You don't actually have to paint it. Oh, so you and can just Sharpie right on there. Yeah, it's really simple. And then you can see he's marking where the brackets are going after they're stained. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to drill those out. If you don't have a drill, you could just use a screwdriver and just screw it right in. You'll be fine too. But we drilled that out. I'm not that great. Sometimes my husband has to help. I like how your husband's making a cameo in this video. That's um, really fun. Yeah, and what you don't see is when he's not filming me, he's the one actually finishing it. <laughs> he's the one pulling it off. Well, where did you get your inspiration for the, the text, the actual design? You know, I went on Pinterest. I looked up floating frames and I saw a few different ones and I saw this and I'm like, this would be so cute in a kitchen. So I found that text. And then we've also got this other one that mm -hmm. says, let's stay home. My sister-in-law did it for me in a matter of minutes. Cute. She is really talented in calligraphy. The nice thing is too, is that this canvas sits inside, I'll show you, oops, mm -hmm. I'll show you how it works in here. It sits on this bracket here. And once you've got it in there, let's say you want to change it out seasonally, you can <gasps> change it out based off of the season it and it pops just pops in, in and out. out. So how did you work those brackets to allow for that? Okay, so there's screws that are in here and if it's not tight enough just on the bracket, you can just take and slightly unscrew it uh -huh. and then it just sits up on the screw. I and think that's the genius in it. enough to stay on the wall, but not so snug that you can't pop your canvas in and out and change it seasonally right. or if you just want it to say something else. I love that. So Super it's like fun. an actual, like a, like a smaller frame that you would switch out a picture season to season. You can do that with a bigger size on your wall. Exactly. And you can also put those brackets. These are all the way in the back, but you can move them forward if you want to do that. So that way you have your canvas more towards the front. It depends on the look that you're going for. And if you're going to be using a larger frame, mm -hmm. be sure to add a couple of extra staples through here or a couple nails this way and some triangles on the back. Because the bigger it is, the more you're going to need a little bit more structure to hold it together. A little more security. Total cost on this project. Six dollars. Six bucks? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I mean, obviously the stain costs more than that, but you use such a minimal amount of stain. The brackets were a couple bucks. I got the canvas were two for $5.99 at Hobby Lobby, and then you can use a coupon for it. So they're really inexpensive. Takes about half an hour, not including dry time. So definitely something you can do during nap time. I love it. We love the nap time project. So absolutely. we can pull those out of our file. We feel good about it. A creative kind of explosion in an afternoon that you can complete start to finish. We saw the video clips. You put this together in like a YouTube tutorial on your channel. Yes. 
on Jamie Ray Vintage on YouTube. I have this tutorial as well as over 80 videos. We actually have over a million views now. Congratulations, Thank you. that's huge. It's been a lot of work, but everything from like your average DIY to furniture, to upholstery, just anything you want to know about home decor is all on there. You're blowing up. You're blowing up the internet. I do what I can. Not as much as Beyonce, but almost. Uh, in a different almost. way. Almost, <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much. Thank